over the acquittals in the McDuffie case will come to an end. The death toll now stands at 11, with more than 120 persons injured in the riots, looting, and fires of last night and today. Affected areas are still reporting sniper attacks, and from almost any point in Dade County, smoke from burning buildings can easily be seen. A curfew has been ordered for tonight. More on that shortly. First, two reports on damages. Helicopters on surveillance missions. Residents, frantic that their homes might burn, called fire and police stations, but to no avail. Those residents, the fire department says, will have to fend for themselves until it's determined that it's safe to go in. Property damage already estimated in the millions is bound to climb higher as those fires burn, and there will be no way to count the injuries to life and limb until emergency vehicles can re-enter the fire zone. Mary Nissenson, Channel 4 News. The areas started boarding up as if a killer hurricane were approaching. They do not want to fall prey to looters like so many others did last night. A tense moment occurred early this afternoon when a city of Miami police cruiser leading a caravan of National Guardsmen lost control and crashed into a retaining wall at South Dixie Highway and 17th Street. And it was first thought that the police officer had been hit by a sniper's bullet. It was later revealed that he had suffered a fatal heart attack. Merchants in the Alapata area did not escape the raging vandals and looters. Several returned to their shops only to find that their entire inventories had been stolen. Many looters were stealing merchandise in broad daylight. The businesses hardest hit were those owned by non-blacks, and the damage in this area alone could reach well into the millions. I don't think that looting, burning up the streets, and, and breaking up the communication with the white and the Latins that we had in the past with this looting will help anything. It would just make it a lot worse. The abuse is all toward the white business people here. And consequently, they're the ones that, well, they're the ones who really have to look for the future because if they can't rebuild, there won't be any business here in Alabama or any business in the black community. Were they picking stores? Yes, it was. How were they selecting the stores? The ones that was easy to get in and one that uh, merchandise was safe, plentiful, and uh, it was visible to them. Businesses in the Alapata area had just started flourishing economically. But one merchant estimates that this 20-square block area that's mostly black will be set back some 10 years. Bob Jackson, Channel 4 News, in Alapata. Eight of the 11 victims killed during last night's riots have been identified. They are 66-year-old Emilio Munoz, 21-year-old Abram H. Phillips, Michael Scott, age 17, Kenneth Lee China, age 22, 14-year-old Robert Owens, Charles Bereka, age 15, and Elijah Aaron. No age was given for Aaron. The victims included blacks, whites, and Latins. In an effort to try to curb any further danger of violence, authorities today enacted a series of measures they hope will impose calm on the two areas affected most by the 24 hours of violence. Elliot Rodriguez reports. Elizabeth Burney forced Public Safety Director Bobby Jones to establish curfews in two predominantly black sections of the county. The curfew goes into effect at 8 o'clock tonight and extends until 6 tomorrow morning in these two areas. In North Dade, from Northwest 95th Street on the north, I-95 on the east, the Miami River on the south, and Northwest 37th Avenue on the west. The second curfew area is in Coconut Grove, where the boundaries are Dixie Highway on the northwest, Bird Avenue on the north, Southwest 27th Avenue on the east, Biscayne Bay on the southeast, Hardy Road on the south, and Lejeune Road on the west. Police say they will not hesitate in arresting those who violate the curfew. Uh, those people who are in violation of the curfew uh, will be approached and will be asked to clear the street. Uh, and if they refuse, they will be arrested uh, and held in violation of the curfew and of the proclamation. Will you give warnings or will you pick them up? Well, uh, we, we will give ample opportunity for the people to disperse. Hopefully... Uh, we won't have to give the warnings. Hopefully the people will abide by the proclamation. The order by Public Safety Director Jones also prohibits the sale of alcoholic beverages, gasoline, kerosene, or any other flammable mixtures within the curfew area. Elliot Rodriguez, Channel 4 News. This word just in, police have just reported that two police officers have been shot, one of them a Miami police captain. His name has not yet been released. 
We understand he is now undergoing emergency treatment at Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. His condition and details of the incident are not known at this time. The Metro Police Department has set up a special escort service into the curfew areas for persons with valid reasons for traveling in and out of those locations. The number to call for an emergency escort is 638-6721. That's 638-6721. Governor Graham made a statewide television appearance within the hour, saying there would be a further probe into the McDuffie incident, but urging blacks and whites to calm down and restore order. Graham said that this country and this community has come too far to allow rioting to destroy everything. The further investigation into the McDuffie incident that Graham made reference to will be on a federal level, and we'll have more on that later in this broadcast. The Dade County Community Relations Board has been holding a series of meetings today to find ways of dealing with the civil strife, and this afternoon, participants in that meeting exchanged bitter denunciations. C.T. Taylor has a live eye report. We made two strong demands during today's Community Relations Board meeting. First, a demand that Dade State Attorney Janet Reno resign immediately. Reno quickly rejected that demand. Secondly, that tonight's intended curfew be lifted. Police officials said no to that demand. I welcome an FBI investigation, and I welcome the investigation of anyone in any detail of the office. Secondly, I have already talked to Mr. Walker as soon as I heard the verdict, offering our full complete cooperation and advising him that we would keep the evidence intact and cooperate with him in every way possible. And people want Janet to step aside. And there are now nine or ten people dead, and there could be twice that many by tomorrow morning. And it seems to me that rather than going on and on about strategies, what can we do? If that one single event, an announcement of a temporary standing aside while that office be investigated, uh, will save lives tonight, I pray that Janet would do that for the good of this community. Again, Dade State Attorney Janet Reno rejected the demand that she resign. Several of the elected officials attending today's meeting have offered to go into the trouble zones tonight to quell any disturbances that may occur. This is C.T. Taylor, Channel 4 News reporting. Ladies and gentlemen, the mother of Arthur McDuffie has just arrived in the Channel 4 studios. Mrs. Eula McDuffie. What are your feelings in, in the wake of the incidents of the past 24 hours? How do you feel, and what would you like to say to the people of Miami? Well, I, I feel very bad about what's happening. I think they should cut it out now. And uh, well, let's get together and, and try to talk it over those leaders of the, and the, uh, these state people, you know, the head peoples, that can do something about what they are rowdy about. Because this ain't going to solve the problem. And furthermore, I think this should cut it out because too many people getting killed up. And I don't believe in that. I don't believe in killing up nobody. But it's going too far with it. And I ask these people and beg them with tears in my eyes to quit this. To quit this. And look to God. That's who they need to look to. Because if it meant more God in them, they wouldn't, this wouldn't even happen. It wouldn't happen. They don't have no God in them to guide them. And, and, and to guide them from doing such terrible things. They just need to look to God. That's what I, I, and I, I would like to say to the community people that are doing this in the community, quit that. Quit that. Cut it out. It ain't no good. It ain't no good. And you have did enough. They have did enough to to, uh, to stir up the people and let them know what they mean. It's time to stop. It's time to stop. They're killing up people. They got bunch the children, a lot of children. Fathers got children to look, to look out for. And they just need to cut it out. Mrs. McDuffie, thank you very much for appearing in our studios tonight. We will be right back after this message. <laughs> It's finally happened. Miami Rug is going mad with a million dollar madness sale. We're cutting prices like mad from 16 to 47% off. You save on plushes, shags, tweeds, famous brands featuring DuPont Andron. Over $1 million worth. So don't let high prices make you mad. Come to Miami Rug's million dollar madness sale and save a bundle. Miami Rug cuts it. 
Cocteau 12 is your best friend on a hot day. Its patented refreeze bottle keeps food and beverages cold and dry without loose ice. Simply fill it and freeze it at home. Because cold air travels downward, the refreeze bottle attaches to the lid for more cold holding power plus more space to keep food colder, drier, longer. Buy the Tote 12 and other quality cut products at these and other fine stores. Round out your wheels with a Pook. My Pook moped does it again and again for my Volkswagen Rabbit. For short hops around the neighborhood, saves my wheels a lot of wear and tear and saves me a lot of lettuce. For pennies a mile, Pook has the best idea yet for my Ford Fiesta. At over 100 miles a gallon, Pook is driven to save our dots. So Pook even comes close to making my Porsche an economy car. See America's best-selling moped at Moped Magic. Eastern Airlines proudly presents Los Angeles Non-Stop. Introducing the only L-1011 non-stop service to Los Angeles. Experience the smooth, quiet comfort of our L-1011 wide body. Featuring the best in first-run movies and great discount fares. Don't miss it. Los Angeles Non-Stop on Eastern Airlines. Premieres June 15th. Reserve your tickets now. Officials have established a hotline number so that the public can get the latest word on what areas are safe and what areas are not safe. Now, the best advice, advice we can give you at this hour is to stay home. Go out only if you have an emergency and for no other reason. We are putting the hotline number on the screen right now. You'll get most of the answers you need from that number. If it's busy, try again. Another piece of information we can give you is that all MTA buses have stopped running and no buses will run until further notice. All Dade County schools, public and parochial, will be closed tomorrow by order of the school board. We'll have a list of other closings that have been announced a little later in this program. The four police officers accused in the McDuffie death may have been acquitted on the state's charges, but it appears now that federal charges might be filed using the evidence that has already been gathered. FBI and Justice Department officials announced in Miami today that they will begin presenting the evidence to a federal grand jury on Wednesday and will ask the Attorney General for permission to prosecute the officers on possible civil rights violations, convictions on which could carry life sentences. The Justice Department and the FBI division here has constantly been on top of the investigation and prosecution, which, in my opinion, was very ably handled. Sometimes things in the administration of justice just go awry. And at that point, uh, late yesterday afternoon, we had to make an initial determination whether or not to ask for the Attorney General to give us the authority to proceed under the federal felony violation for violation of McDuffie's civil rights. And we will formally ask for that this coming week. Do you have any doubt that it will be granted? Well, the decisions are reserved to the Attorney General, and it is somewhat of a serious matter when there's already been a trial by the state government of whether the federal government, a different sovereignty, should proceed uh, on essentially the same facts. He reserves that decision for himself, but we're optimistic that he will exercise it in favor of the federal prosecution. The Rabbinical Association of Greater Miami today said it shares with the black community the shock and disbelief of the McDuffie trial results but is appealing for an end to the chaos and the violence. The association asks that grievances be channeled through the justice system and applauds the U.S. Attorney's Office for initiating an investigation into possible human rights violations. Metro Mayor Steve Clark has joined us now in the studio. He has just come from that stormy meeting of the Community Relations Board. Mayor Clark, what is happening? Well, we had an awful lot of... Uh thoughts expressed there today and of course they were very genuine people had a chance to get a lot of things off of their chest and tell the community relations board who was in attendance was the community relations board along with uh, most of the members of the metro commission and most of the members of the miami city commission along with the two managers and the police chiefs not bobby jones was not there but his uh, his associate was there today what can the board do now that it has not been able to do in the past bobby i think what we've got to work on at this time is try to get a message to the people in the field that we are as concerned about the McDuffie decision as anyone would be concerned. We're human beings ourselves. And, of course, we were accused today of not uh, showing any uh, attention to the decision that was rendered in the court a day or so ago over in Tampa. Uh, we had nothing to do with that decision. Uh, 
the elected officials of this community, other than the state's attorney, has nothing to do with the state's attorney's office. There was some charge that uh, Mrs. Reader should step aside. She said no, but she welcomed an investigation by the FBI. And I noticed uh, that uh, the United States attorney is getting involved in that at the present time. Do you think that may diffuse the situation? I hope it does. I just hope and pray it does. I've gone through one other situation like this back in 1968, and after a day or so, minds got together, we calmed this thing down, and people got a chance to express their opinion at an open meeting, which they did today. I thought it was very beneficial, but one good thing happened out of this meeting today, if nothing else happened. Certain people, and they call themselves street people, people that live in the area, are now have the ability and opportunity legally to go into the area and to try to calm these people down, calm everyone down. They'll be identified with a white armband, along with identification from, from the Public Safety Department. So consequently, this is one of the main moves. Now, we're not going to stop right there. There's going to be a major meeting of all concerned, corporations and po political leaders of this great community, along with Andy Young and Jesse Jackson, within about a week in our community. And I would think that that would go a long way to calming the situation. You're not uh, going to bring Mr. McDuffie back by burning and looting. You're just going to make his mother cry and cry more. And I was happy that she was on your program here tonight. She's a very sincere lady, and she knows full well that that's behind. Now what she wants to do is try to correct the evil that caused this all to happen. Okay, Mayor Clark, thank you very much for appearing with us in thank the studio. You. Thank you, Bob. We'll be right back with Larry Little right after this. You can come to Atlantic Bank and find four kinds of checking accounts, nine kinds of savings accounts, commercial accounts, loans, credit cards, and dozens of other accounts. But you'll only find one kind of service, personalized. Because Atlantic bankers don't just open accounts. They make suggestions so you get what's right for you, no matter where in life you are or where you're going. Atlantic Bank, the best bank around. It's twice the gift when you give a Lady Seiko quartz watch. A gift of beautiful jewelry. A gift of incredibly accurate time. Choose a slim shape, an elegant texture. A superb watch that never needs winding on her wrist or in her jewelry box. Give the world's best-selling quality quartz. Seiko. First in fashion and technology. Time after time. Seiko watches at Jordan Marsh. In the early days of racing, the first car across the finish line was frequently a Fiat. Lessons learned in those days have made the Fiat X19 perhaps the best all-around sports car value on the road today. Mid-engine traction for handling, five-speed transmission for performance, and the best mileage of any two-seater sports car sold in America. X19, Fiat, motor cars in the great European tradition. It's time to create your own fireworks. It's time to be brilliant and dazzling and beautiful with Estee Lauder's super offer, Summer Lights, Summer Brights. It's a color direction and a beauty kit filled with six sparkling Estee Lauder beauty products. This outstanding value is yours for just $8.50 with any Estee Lauder purchase of $6.50 or more. Here's to a shimmering, glimmering, glorious summer. Estee Lauder's special offer is yours at Birdine's. And with us now is Miami Dolphin All-Pro Offensive Guard Larry Little. Larry came here tonight to talk to all the people of Dade County about the very precarious situation we are in now. Larry, what can you say? Well, I'm here as a very concerned citizen, uh, mainly uh, being a Miami native. I'm very concerned about what's going on in our uh, area right now. Uh, and I can say I'm just disappointed and frustrated as everybody else about what happened in Tampa yesterday. But I don't think the way to... Uh, deal with this by going out and rioting and burning and stealing and killing people and killing ourselves the way we are. Uh, Arthur McDuffie was a friend of mine. At one time, he was my next door neighbor. So I, it touched me a great deal because uh, I knew him. He was a very fine person. And to see this happen, I know how the people feel. But we've got to get out of the street. We've got to obey the laws. We've got to obey the curfews. We've got to go home. Parents, let's keep your children home. And children just try to keep our parents home, too. Well, aside from the obvious physical damage that has been occurring and may continue to occur, what kind of damage do you think can occur to the community if this continues? Well, uh, the neighborhood has come a long ways. The area has come a long ways. Uh, there are a lot of businesses coming up in the neighborhood now, and a lot of people are just getting confidence back in the area again to come back to bring the businesses back. By burning them down, we only think making things harder on ourselves. And 
not on the people that because they can get another business. Uh, insurance can take care of what they are, lost, what they are losing. But we've got to come together as a community and keep these people here and keep the neighborhood going. We're, we're told by police that uh, that most of the rioters and, and looters are, are young people, 14 to 23 or 24 years old, people that, that look up to you. Uh, do you think you can be of help? Well, I know there are some people out there that I do know personally. I probably, I've probably touched some of them also. So if you're out there and you see me now, you know I've never sold you a bill of goods. You know I've never talked with a fork tongue to you. I'm telling you this on not only your good, but your family's good. You stay out of the street, too, because you can be injured, and we all hate to see that happen. We don't want another family to go through what Arthur McDuffie's family is going through right now. Larry, thank you very much for appearing with us. Thank you, Bob. Fourteen more Cuban refugees were killed yesterday when the 36-foot boat they were headed to Key West on foundered in rough seas and sank 28 miles north of Havana. A Coast Guard helicopter on routine patrol spotted the boat with just its bow above the surface yesterday. A Navy assault ship picked up 36 survivors and 10 bodies, taking them to Key West today, where several of the refugees were rushed to the Florida Keys Memorial Hospital. Four are still missing. According to the boat's captain, Cuban officials forced him to overload his ship. Did you ask to take fewer people than that? I wanted to take fewer, but if I would have bring fewer, they would have not given my family. The gold, the limited edition 10th anniversary 280ZX. Gold medalist in world-class sports car engineering for a decade. Standard equipment includes custom gold and black paint, a T-top, and inside luxurious leather, individually numbered dash plaque, and quad speaker stereo radio and tape system. The legend becomes a classic. Gold for the gold. They're at your Dade Brower Dotson Theaters now. Who else but Lansing's could bring you a galaxy of stellar men's fashions for this and every other season? Including Pierre Cardin Couture for men. Couture means the top of the line. And once you've seen this striking collection of suits and sport coats, you'll be a Cardin devotee for life. If it's new and fashionable, Lansing's has it first. At Lansing's, we want to make you a star. Our snapper handles snow removal, gardening, and lawn care. It's easy. I just lower the cutting unit, engage the power, and off I go. One pedal controls my speed and direction, and my snapper is really rugged, which makes the tough job seem small. I like plowing in my garden. Incredible, snapper. <laughs> we couldn't do it without you. See the yellow pages for the name of your nearest snapper dealer. What makes this truck different from any other truck you can rent? The name on it, Ryder. Ryder rents, leases, and maintains more trucks than anybody in the world. We own more truck service centers coast to coast to help you wherever you drive. So we're able to maintain our trucks better. And we're able to give you the kind of service and satisfaction you only get from the biggest. That's why nobody else in the world can say what we say. We're the best truck money can rent. Ryder. The weather has not helped today's situation at all. It has been darn hot. Arnie, you've got an abbreviated forecast for us? Yeah, we do. Let's first look at the current information now. It's 85 degrees in Miami, 82 degrees in Fort Lauderdale, 83 degrees in West Palm Beach. The barometer steady at 30.06, the humidity 67%, the wind out of the east at 14, and the surf temperature is 82 degrees. As far as weather statewide is concerned, northeast Florida had the heaviest amount of showers, the worst scattered showers all over the entire state. And out of the norm, we had a, tor a funnel cloud eight miles northwest of Key West at about 1.10 this afternoon, but it moved westward, so there was no uh, damage there. Now we look at our satellite loop, and you can see at the radar scope, and you can see some showers. <laughs> Now look at the satellite there. Yes, all the weather is up in the northeast as far as uh, the heaviest weather is concerned. A little bit trickling over the Gulf states. Now let's look at the radar, if I may. And we see some scattered showers uh, offshore of Miami and uh, below Cape Sable. Let's come around now and look at our forecast and see what's going to happen as far as the state is concerned. We're beginning to come into the rainy season next week officially. And we'll have some scattered afternoon and evening thunder showers statewide Tuesday through Thursday. But more specifically here in South Florida for tomorrow, partly cloudy, 
A chance of night and morning showers. The low temperatures tonight will be in the 70s. The highs tomorrow, 85 to 88 degrees. As far as boating is concerned, your winds east to southeasterly, about 10 knots. The sea is 2 to 4 feet. And the bay waters tonight, a light chop. Tomorrow, a moderate chop. And that's the weather, Bob. Outlook to be fairly hot for the rest of the week? Oh, yes. Okay. Mid to upper 80s. All right. Here are those notes we promised you earlier on what will be open and what will be closed around South Florida. Florida International University will have classes tomorrow. All campuses of Miami-Dade Community Colleges will be closed tomorrow. The state office building at 1350 Northwest 12th Avenue will be closed tomorrow. The Cordes Corporation has asked their first and second shifts in the affected areas not to report to work tomorrow. The University of Miami will hold classes tomorrow, and the Riviera Day School in South Miami will be open, but there will be no buses there. The South Dade Hebrew Academy will be closed, as will the Beth David Solomon Schechter Day and the Hillel Community Day in North Miami Beach. The Jackson Memorial Hospital School of Nursing will be closed. The Advent Montessori, Bayshore Private, and Progressiva schools will all be closed tomorrow. Other schools that will be closed tomorrow are the Hebrew Academy of Greater Miami on Miami Beach, the Beacon Hill Private School, St. Albans Day Nursery in Coconut Grove, the Northwest Christian ACC, the Central Christian School in Coconut Grove, the Ransom Everglades School also in Coconut Grove, the Atlantic Christian School, the Palmer School, and the St. Stephen's Day School. More school closings? Westminster Christian will not have classes, and the Doreen Day and Thelma's Angel schools will also be closed. That completes Update 3 of Channel 4's News Weekend. Thank you for joining us. We will have updates throughout the evening, and our next scheduled newscast is at 11 o'clock. Good night. All over the world, South Florida's never looked better. We're becoming a center of international trade and finance. And at Intercontinental Bank, we're doing all we can to promote this kind of growth. As our name suggests, we have exceptional expertise in this area. So if you're looking for a bank that can put the world at your feet, come see us. Intercontinental Bank. The best way we can grow is to help you grow. The world's largest gourmet society, the Chêne de Rotisseur, is headed in America by the great food and wine authority, Roger Yassine. Recently, he compared two California Rhine wines. I compared Palmasol Rhine Castle and Teller California Cellars Rhine wine. And the one that I preferred was Teller California Cellars. What impresses me is how well it goes with food. Almost any dish you'd serve with a Rhine wine would taste better with Teller California Cellars than with Palmasol. Teller California Cellars are better Rhine wine. Judge for yourself. When the horses are being put into the gate at Calder, you can literally feel the anticipation. There's high drama, action, and excitement before that moment when the bell sounds and the gates crash open. Calder, for the thrill of it. Post time, 1.15. Jack Nicholson stars in five easy pieces tonight. Dr. Lawrence Burton believes that most of us probably develop cancer many times in our lives, but that our own natural immune system kills the cancer cells before they spread out of control. Burton has devised a way of measuring a patient's 